Well, hello. So glad to have you back here today here at God's Got a Plan. I believe we have a very good program for you this week. And I'm just so thankful that God is allowing us to come together one more time. Well, you know, the Bible says that offense will come to every man. Every one of us are going to be offended, you know, in this life. And I'm sure more than once, twice or three times. But it's very important that we know and understand how to deal with offense. All right, so let's get started and believe God for a good word today, all right? Uh, Father, we just want to thank you today, Lord God, for the leading of your spirit. I pray your blessing on our viewers, Father God. I pray your blessing on this message. And I pray, Lord God, that you will not just touch our hearts, but touch our minds, change our minds. Allow us, Lord God, to be conformed into your word and into the image of your dear son. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And as I said, offense will come to every one of us. And until we as a people can learn how to let go of the old, you know, Scripture also informs us and reminds us that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, new creation. Old things have passed away. So the way we handled offense in the past is not the way we should be handling offense today. And God has given us in his word uh, let's just say uh, uh, some instructions on how to better deal with, uh, let's just say, offense and not allow ourselves to be taken out of character, so to speak, so that we can, let's just say, act out, play out a part or a role that we're really not called to play out, especially as brothers and sisters in Christ. So let's get into our scripture coming from the book of James, chapter three. I'm reading from the King James, starting at the second verse. And it says, for in many things we offend all. And if any man offend not in word, the same man is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. You know, so so if you're in this world, in this life and you're not offending anyone, the Bible says you are a perfect man. And I don't know nobody on the planet today who's a perfect man, because all of us are subject, all of us are making mistakes. But I'm thankful. Why? Because we do know as Christians that when you are a believer and you are saved by God's grace, we know that we're able to find that forgiveness in Christ. And that's the beautiful thing about this, because I don't have to hold myself. You don't have to hold yourself hostage to the, let's just say, the offenses that will come against you or the things that you might do, because there are times in our life when we can say things or do things that will offend another. But a perfect man is one who's able to bridle his tongue, one who's able to, let's just say, have mastery of control over that tongue. And look, look at what James go on to say in the fifth verse. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boast of great things, behold how great a matter, a little fire kindleth, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. My God, this tongue of yours can bring forth some things. You can burn down a, fire, a forest, that's what it's saying. And look at what it goes on to say. Among our members, that it defiles the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. In other words, you know, some things can come about that can really come from hell, be hellish, can be devilish, let's say. And God is trying to get his people to be mindful. You know, there's a saying, you need to think before you speak. You know, matter of fact, I, I, I got a phone call this week from someone at night and, and, and I was very disturbed by the phone call because the individual was was uh, drinking or on a substance and whatever was in them, they begin to, let's just say, uh, say some things to me that was very detrimental. I mean, when I say detrimental, very offensive. 
they begin to curse me out. And, 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 and this is someone that I've helped, someone that I loved and someone that I labored with down through the years. But, you know, when, when, when people are going through, they have a tendency to say some things that, that will, uh, let's just say, show you really what is in their heart. You know, they can tell you in their face, they love you, they can smile at you, and they can give you all of these accolades that will make you think or believe you are all right with them. But when they get under another spirit, when, they are, when they're allowing another spirit to operate in them, then the real, or let's just say another person, and then again, the Bible does say our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against principality, spiritual wickedness in high places. And as a godly person, those of you who are serving Christ to the best of your ability, I want you to understand sometimes folk that you love, folk that are near and dear to you, they're going to say they're going to do some things that are that will offend you. And you have to be able to deal with the offense and not lose, let's just say, not lose yourself in what was said, not lose yourself. In other words, let's say when the devil raises his head, you don't want to lower your head. I'm going to say that again. When the devil raises his head, see, because that offender may have allowed the enemy to get in them and to use them. See, the devil needs a host. He needs a body to operate in. And this is why it's so very important that you pay attention to what you're living. Pay attention to the offense that is coming at you, knowing and understanding where it's coming from. Let, let, let me read further in that particular verse, or I should say chapter. Look what it says in the eighth verse. But the tongue can no man tame. See, but the tongue. See, James is telling us now, James is the brother of Jesus, and he's telling us now that no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison, Lord Jesus. See, but, but, but I want you to understand, see, this scripture is the prescription. That it, it is, it, it's, the, it's the prescription that can nullify the venom. That snake bite, because you got some folk out there operating on snake bite. But this word of God, look what he goes on to say. Therewith, God, we, therewith, bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. How can you curse another who's made in the image of God, in the likeness of God? I'm talking to those of you who are in church. I'm talking to those of you who are in church, those of you who are in the fellowship, the believer. You know, and we can be in church and fellowshipping with one another, but yet and still we can have ought against our brothers. See, we can't allow offense. My God, we can't allow the, the evil that, that would come through, let's just say, the impure, the unclean thoughts. Oh, to override the good that we would do. The Bible says when you know the right thing to do and you don't do it. That don't just mean do, even the right thing to say and you don't say it, it is sin against you. So it's so very important that we pay attention. So very important that we don't give place to the enemy. And the 10th verse says, out of the mouth proceedeth blessing and curses. But brethren, these things ought not to be so. Do if a fountain send forth at the same time uh, sweet water and bitter water? No, it doesn't. It's one or the other. And we and you as a, as a saint of the most high God, you have to speak good. You have to speak good. You have to be able to, let's just say, be mindful of what is being spoken to another. You know, the Bible says, as a man think of in his heart, so is he. So it's so very important that we're allowing ourselves to focus on those things that's going to bring about the better good. Look what it says in Mark chapter 14 in the 26th, 29th verse. And this is Jesus and Peter. And this is a dialogue between Jesus and Peter. And Peter said to Jesus, although all shall be offended, yet not I. See, Peter is telling Jesus, I'm not going to be offended. I don't care what comes, Jesus. I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to be there with you. And he meant it when he said it. Isn't it amazing how we can say some things and we can mean it at that present time? But as time goes on, 
we begin to, to let's just say, to forget. We, let's just say we might exercise that short-term memory. And God is trying to get you to understand that we have to pay attention to the things that we have spoken. You know, what we have spoken. See, Jesus says that, that, that out, out of the mouth, out of the heart, I should say, comes the issues of life. You know, and life and death is in the power of the tongue and you will eat the fruit thereof. Something's going to come out of what you said. Is it going to be edible or is it going to be something that need to be thrown away? We have to pay attention to what we're saying. Now, look at the 30th verse, what Jesus said to Peter. Verily, verily, I say unto you that this day, that this day, this very day, even in this night, before the cock crow three times, you will deny me three times. See, Jesus knew what was in his future. Jesus knows what is in our future, and he knows offense is going to come. He knows you're going to have to deal with offense, my brother. My sister, offense is going to hit you. Offense is going to hit your household. Offense is, offense is designed to, let's just say, to mar your character or whatever the case, character assassination. But I'm here to tell you, when you stand on the word of God, when you stand on the promises of God, give no place to the devil. Don't let him rob you of that peace, that joy. You know, scripture says weeping may endure for a night because some things that are said can cause us to weep and cause us to be heavy laden. But you, my brother, my sister, because you know who it comes from, because you know where it comes from, you're able to stand. You're able to stand. Give no place to hate because when you hate those who hate you, then you give hate life. And it's not about giving hate life. This is why Jesus instructs us, instructing, instructs us, instructs you today to love your enemy. It's an instruction for you to what? Love your enemy. Because you what? You don't give life to hate. And it's so very important that we love one another. Hey, look at how Jesus loved you when you was in your offense. So there's some times in our life when we have to be able to look past the faults of others. I like to say this, and I want you to hold on to this. Hold on to this, please. Hurting people hurt people, and it's usually the ones that they love. I'm going to say it again. Hurting people hurt people, and it's usually the ones that they love those who are loving them and putting up with their stuff and so on and so forth. And, you know, sometimes they just don't know how to control that anger and that stuff that is in them. But you as a believer, you have to stand sure, firm on what you know, knowing and understanding that hurting people. And those hurting people are, can be very close to you because it's one thing for someone in the world to come against you and say some things. You can deal with that. But when someone from the family, when one of the brothers and sisters in the fellowship that, you know, you're not looking for that kind of offense to come or that kind of activity to come, but sometimes it does. And we have to be able to stand against it. You know, the Bible says that uh, where good is, evil is always present. So we can't put our guard down and think that even though we're in church, that offense is not going to come. Even though we're at home with our loved ones, we can't think that offense is not going to come. It's going to come. That's all a part of life, part of living this life. So we as a good people, as a God people, we have to be able, we have to be able to, let's just say, deal with this offense that's going to come because it's surely going to come. You know, and Peter said to, 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 to Jesus, and I'm going to paraphrase that 31st verse. He says, I'm willing to die for you, Jesus. I'll go to jail for you. I'll never deny you. But Jesus knew he would. But the beautiful thing about this story, the ending is Jesus still he didn't throw Peter away. And I want you to know he will not throw you away either. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believe in him will not perish, perish, but will have everlasting life. God doesn't throw us away. It's a blessing to know that God is a long suffering God. He is patient. 
The Bible says with tender mercies and his grace and mercy abounds in our life. So we as a people, if we're not saved, if we're not a part of the family of God, we need to come to him. It was when we come to him, I want you to know and understand we're able to make that 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 change in our life where we won't give place to the enemy. Look at James 2 and 10. James 2 and 10 says this for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point. He is guilty of all. In other words, you know, you, you know, you can be good in all things. You know, we we can try to have a perfect day where I'm not going to offend nobody. I'm not going to do anything wrong. But and then let's just say you go through the whole day and you don't do anything to offend anyone. You don't say nothing, do anything. But and then in the evening, you say that something or do that one thing. And then you have messed up the whole day. Why? Because you have fallen to sin. So we're not perfect. We're not a perfect people. And this is why that amazing grace is so very important, because I realize that what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What could make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I, I realize I can't save myself. My worst enemy is myself. It's the enemy in me. It is the enemy in you. It is the enemy in you. You know, Paul says, why am I doing those things that I don't want to do? Why am I sometimes saying those things that I don't want to say? And then Paul answered his own question. He said, it is the sin that is in me. It is the sin that is in us all. And it's so very important, saints. I'm talking to you now. It's so very important, saints, that we pay attention. Be mindful of our thoughts. Be mindful of the people we're hanging around and some of the places where we're going, some of the things that we're doing. Because, you know, I, I want you to understand there's a saying in the world, birds of a feather flock together. So if you're hanging around the wrong folk, that those offensive folk, you're going to, you know, you're going to start offending folk, too, just like them, because that's the nature of sin. That's the nature of sin. This is why we're instructed not to forsake the fellowship. You want to be around folk that, that want more out of life, that want to do some things that will cause you to challenge yourself to do greater things and more things. Life is beautiful when you make it so. I want you to understand, how do you make it a better life? By getting in this word of God. How do you make it a better life? By allowing yourself to, to make that connection with this word of God and not allow the evil that will come at you. To override the good that you would do. Oh, I'm so thankful today. I'm, I'm so blessed that I'm not the man that I used to be. Uh, you, you ought to be able to say today, God bless you, those of you who are saved, that you're not the man or the woman that you used to be. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for his word because his word is a transforming word that's able to change your life. If it can change your mind, it can change the direction of your life. God want to do a new thing in you. He want to do a new thing in you. And he does not want a fence to keep you from doing what you need to be doing so you can go to the next level. Lord Jesus. I'm not talking about the next level down because we, we've been down long enough. God says, I'm trying to take you someplace where you ain't never been in the real deal. And for, forgive my Ebonics, where you ain't never been, where you haven't ever been. I want you to understand God want to take you places that are far greater, far better than what you can even imagine. So very important that we grab hold, grab hold to this life and grab hold to it in such a way where I'm going to begin to live my life with passion. See, you, you don't want to be robbed of the joy, the peace and the love that this life, that this word of God affords us. We are a privileged people. We are a privileged people. And you can count on the fact that the devil don't like you when you're living this word. So offense is going to come. And Ephesians 4 and, 20 says, 4 and 26 says, be angry and sin not. Are, are you hearing me? See, we're instructed to be angry, but sin not. Let not the sun go down on your anger. 
Let not the sun go down on your anger. And many of us, you know, we, we you know, with our spouses and our loved ones, we, we get into that, 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 that quarrel, that, that altercation. You know, some things may have been said, and before you know it, you know, we're trying to go to sleep with this stuff in us, but we're not dealing with the problem. We're not, you know, addressing the incident. We have to be able, the Bible is instructing you today. It is instructing you today not to let the sun go down on your anger. In other words, deal with it because you don't want to wake up with that same stuff in you. And then what happened? You contaminate your tomorrow. In other words, see, God wants you to have a fresh start in that tomorrow. If we are blessed to wake up another day, you want to have a fresh start. You don't want to have carryover stuff from yesterday or weeks past or months past because many of us are holding on to stuff from, for years. We don't want to release people. We don't want to forgive people. And we're allowing ourselves to go to sleep on that stuff or try to sleep on that stuff and we can't figure out why our nights are so restless and why our days are so sad and so bad because you don't want to let people go. Let them go. When you let them go, you let yourself go. I'm going to say that again. When you let that abuser, that offender go, you let yourself go. Let yourself go today. Release yourself from yourself. Don't carry that another day. Realize offense is all a part of life. But God has given us the prescription in his word. He's given us the prescription in his word. Now, 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 the 27th verse says, Neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. Lord Jesus. I mean, it can't get no clearer than that. It can't get no clearer than that. 29th verse says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it would, may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. See, I, I wanted to make sure you heard that. And grieve not the Holy Spirit, because we can say some things that would be so offensive, it would grieve the Holy Spirit. You don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing me? God wants you to be able, Lord Jesus, to live your best life now, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another. That's the prescription. See, you got to let that kindness rise up, Lord Jesus, that good that is in you. It's got to rise up. And look what he says to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, have forgiven you. Are you hearing me? See, saints, we are called to be doers of the word of God. We are called, you are called to be a doer of the word. Not just a hearer of the word. James 1 and 19 says this. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath, meaning slow to anger. For the anger of man works not the righteousness of God. See, if you want to work the righteousness of God, you have to be quick to hear. Slow to speak and slow to anger. And you have to be able to forgive. You have to be able to forgive. Let me give you this last verse of scripture in Psalms 119. In verses one, verse 165. And here's what it says. Great peace have they which love thy law. Great peace are they which love this word of God. See, you want the peace of God that compasses all understanding? Develop a love for this word of God. Develop a love for the fellowship of the saints. Develop a love for prayer and just, my God, spending that quality time with God. So that when offense come, Lord Jesus, you have a barrier. You have a shield. 
the shield of faith that's able to quench the fiery darts that would come at you. Lord Jesus. And look at what he, let me finish reading that. And nothing shall offend them. Nothing shall offend you when you're walking by faith and not by sight. That's why we have to see, realize now when it says walk by faith and not by sight, that means that, you know, even though it might look one way, we have to realize where all of this stuff is coming from. It is the enemy. It is the enemy that's coming up against you. So let me pray for you now, my brothers and my sisters. And I pray that you receive this word of God today and that you're able to act on it. So, Father, we just want to thank you today for reminding us of the importance of not allowing ourselves to be offended by others. Lord God, I pray that you will allow your word to work in those viewers today, Father God, that are seriously trying to develop a personal relationship with you. Forgive those, Lord God, that don't know you. And I'm praying that you will lead them to Christ. I pray, Father God, that you will open up our understanding and take us deeper in your word. Lord God, bind up every trick of the enemy, every scheme of the devil. I bind it up right now and I release your people, Father God, to move under the divine unction of your Holy Spirit. Grant us that new life, that blessed life in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. We love you here at God's Got a Plan. And I pray that today's message was a blessing to you today. Those of you who have been following us on uh, week after week, I, I pray that these programs have put something in you that can really let you know that God is in the business of making us over. Some need an extreme makeover. Some just need a makeover. But whatever the case may be, we all need Jesus. And I'm thankful today that we were able to get a word from the Lord, a word that is able to encourage us and empower us. Follow us on YouTube. If you've missed any programs, past programs, you can follow us on YouTube. Uh, the credits will come up at the end of the program. Just look at the credits and just proceed. Those of you who are calling, those of you who are calling for prayer, please continue to do so. That's part of what we do. Those of you who have reached us by mail, on YouTube or whatever, continue to reach out. Let us know that these programs have been an encouragement to you and a blessing to you. We want you to know once again, we love you. Come back and see us again, the same time, same place, in the same station. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We love you. Bye.